Northern Europe has always lured travelers. Crystal clear lakes, pristine woods, and untouched nature are all primarily synonymous to the North. After all, it was here, at one with harsh nature, and a need to survive in the cold climate that people learned to take care of the world around them. Pioneers who accessed these lands quickly learned to be in sync with nature. They steered clear of wasting resources. Instead, they preserved the environment and cherished what little nature could give them during long winters and short summers. Over the centuries, this has become not only a habit, but also a viewpoint. Now, people living in the northern countries are the first to raise alarm if there is danger to the environment from the human civilization. They were also the first to embark on national conservation programs. This helps us to see the northern nature in the way our ancestors did. We can still walk along the shores of mirror surface lakes, breathe in the aroma of pine woods, and listen to singing birds in ultimate solitude, except perhaps for the sound of a single squirrel. Northern summers are short, yet indescribably beautiful. However, many people imagine the North as endless fields and woods covered with snow, with a cold wind always blowing in your face. It happens, especially in winter. What country do we mean talking about the North? Many of us as children loved our parents reading fairy tales to us on Christmas. Some of these tales were about a mysterious and distant Northern country. The name of the fairy tale Lapland is familiar from Anderson's The Snow Queen, Sampo Lapalil, Sampo, The Little Lap, by Tepelius, and The Wonderful Adventures of Nils, by Selma Lagerlof. Everyone was eager to know where Lapland was and what it looked like. Having failed to spot it on the map, many forgot about the fairy tale land for many years. Choosing northern eco-destinations in Europe, you can plunge into your childhood and revisit a familiar fairy tale once again. Not in a dream, but in reality. Lapland is the name of the country that does not exist on the map, and it has never been a single state. This term refers to quite a vast area in the north of the Scandinavian peninsula, a homeland for Sami tribes. It embraces the northern regions of four countries, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Russia. Thus, one can say there are as many as four Laplands in Europe. The Finnish part of it, Lapi province, is considered the most renowned and popular among tourists, because this is where the real Santa Claus lives. Lapland is a harsh land of snow and the most one-of-a-kind region of Finland, most of which stretches beyond the Arctic Circle. Perhaps that is why the perception of the world around is completely different here. This is one of the 19 regions of the country, the largest in the territory. The population density here is just two people per square kilometer, and the nature in this almost deserted area has been preserved in its pristine condition. Animals, birds, flora are barely touched by the civilization. Everything here is created for peaceful and tranquil contemplation. The peculiarities of the Lapish climate are that seasonal differences are sharp, and in this regard it differs from the other regions of Finland. Winters here are so long that they may seem endless. Summers are short and warm. Falls and springs are bright and herald nature's revival. These are the pillars of the northern annual cycle. In winter, the temperature drops to extreme lows, 20 to 30 degrees below zero. However, this does not stop thousands of tourists from flocking here to the homeland of Santa Claus, precisely for New Year and Christmas holidays. The lapish summers in the Snow Queen's domain are short, but surprisingly warm. The midnight sun shines from early June to early July and the white nights season lasts from late May to early August. 
The water temperature in local rivers and lakes is also quite comfortable and welcoming for a swim. Since daylight lasts round the clock, you can pack a lot of summer activities and long walks in. People living far from the north can hardly imagine until they see it with their own eyes what it feels like when the sun stays above the horizon for days on end. Frankly speaking, even locals feel uncomfortable. Many feel it difficult to fall asleep when a sunny day lasts for 24 hours. However, they believe that sleep is not what the short lapish summer was created for. The midnight sun gives extra energy, so why not stay awake unless you feel sleepy? Just take a walk and enjoy the silence of a summer night. Despite the harsh climate, this one-of-a-kind region has lured tourists regardless of age for many years. Oddly enough, many travelers age 60 and older arrive without worrying about temperature extremes. According to the local lore, Lapland is kind to anyone coming here with a pure heart. Lapland is synonymous to a real eco-paradise. Due to particularly stringent eco-requirements, there are no industrial giants here. The main pollutants of air, water, and land. Despite the vast area, the population of Lapland is small, about 184,000 people. There are two people and two reindeer per one square kilometer. The indigenous people, the Sami, enjoy cultural and language autonomy. The traces of hunting and fishing by humans of the Neolithic period were discovered in Lapland. Since those ancient times, Lapland has been inhabited by the Sami, the indigenous people of Northern Europe. Of course, their way of life, culture, and occupations depend on which particular country they are citizens of. Even the language is divided into many dialects, which are often very different from each other. However, the Sami are sensitive to their origins. They engage in reindeer herding, fishing, and farming. Their diet in winter, like hundreds of years ago, includes venison, and in summer, fish caught in numerous lakes. Lapland has never been a single state entity, but the Sami have clear national self-identity and national attributes, a flag and an anthem, and their rights are secured by the elected representative bodies of cultural self-government, the Sami parliaments located in each country of their territory. By the way, the parliaments often have features of the Sami culture. The Sami faith is bound up with the cult of ancestor worship and shamanism. Shamans here are called noidas. By the way, the Sami have been famous for their commitment to magical practices since ancient times in Europe. The European literature even has references to powerful Lapish witches able to influence storms and winds. Until today, the Sami cherish the cult places of their ancestors, calling them sedas, which in Sami means sacred land. Usually rocks, lakes, and trees of extremely unusual shape became sedas, while the Sami believed that everything unusual was nothing but divine guidance. One of such sacred places is the island of Ukko, in Inari Lake. Until the middle of the 20th century, sacrifices to pagan gods were made there. Today's Laplanders are reluctant to talk about this island, considering this place seized by ancient spirits. They do not swim there and advise others against this. Finland is strongly committed to preserving the Sami languages and culture. The country mainly builds schools and teach children Sami there, as well as organizes festivals and holidays. Today's Sami are not the same as before. They live a settled life in modern houses. Real Sami homes, kodas, can be seen only in resort areas. These ancient people are famous for slow living, contemplation, and philosophical mindset. Time for the Sami passes by in a unique way, not like that in bustling cities. 
Many travelers fall in love with Rovaniemi city when they first see it. The river, another river, hills, wood, nice architecture, vibrant and true northern city. Rovaniemi is located at the confluence of the Kemiyoki and Uskoski rivers. This immediately adds to its picturesqueness. Rovaniemi is 800 kilometers north of Helsinki. It is the only city and yet the economic, cultural, and administrative center of Finnish Lapland. As a settlement, Rovaniemi was first mentioned in chronicles back in the 11th and 12th centuries. Prospectors and rafters settled there. The onset of industrialization in Northern Europe spurred the increased need for timber, which drove the economic recovery of Rovaniemi. After all, the two most crucial rafting routes in Lapland converged. Timber rafting along the Kemioki River stopped only in 1992. Before World War II, the city was almost all wooden. In the winter of 1944 through 1945, almost all of it was burnt to ashes during the Lapland hostilities between the Finns and Germans. The honor of the post-war restoration of the city was entrusted to the famous architect Alvar Aalto. According to his plan, the shape of the new city resembled reindeer horns. Actually, the city is located on the left bank of Onuskoski, while public buildings and sports facilities are concentrated on the right bank. Rovaniemi features many peninsulas and bays, favorite summer vacation destinations for urban citizens. The river that crosses the city brings not only pleasant vibes, but also symbolizes the all-seasonal activities of local people. In winter, skiers ride along frozen river bends and are replaced by angler boats and motor boats in the warm season. The landmark of the city is also a long promenade, so comfortable for joggers and pedestrians. To the north of the city's downtown, there is Arcticum Center with two unique on-site institutions the Arctic Center at the University of Lapland, and the Museum of Lapland. The coast beside Arctica Museum is the city's most beautiful park. Unusually shaped, the building was designed by a team of Danish architects from Copenhagen. Its signature is a 172 meter long glass dome. The interior decor features only local construction and furnishing materials. The exposition of the Arctic Center is dedicated to people's life in extreme climatic conditions. Inside, there are ample exposition premises. The museum exhibits everything peculiar to the Arctic Circle. Flora, fauna, natural phenomena, people and events that have taken place in Lapland since ancient times until today. Arcticum is not a collection of dusty exhibits, but a bright adventure for visitors of any age. With the help of multimedia, visitors learn the natural features of the region located north of the 60th parallel. For example, you can study the voices of local animals and birds, listen to the disappearing languages of the Sami peoples, explore the ice room and spot the imitated northern lights, if you were unlucky and failed to chase them in reality. The center's exhibitions show how people, flora, and fauna manage to adapt to the extreme northern climate and the great contrast between polar days and nights. The future scenarios simulated at this research center clearly demonstrate how reckless human intervention could take its toll on the fragile ecosystem of the north. The museum is dedicated to the history of Lapland since the primitive communal system until now. For several thousand years, Lapland has been the place of permanent settlements for the northern peoples. The exposition depicts the customs, artisanal crafts, clothes, decorations, homes, and the Sami routine. The city is located almost on the line of the Arctic Circle. The Arctic Circle is a parallel that designates the southern boundary of the area, where the sun can constantly stay below or above the horizon for 24 hours. These phenomena are known as the midnight sun in summer and the polar night in winter. 
it is officially considered that in the Arctic Circle area where Rovaniemi is located, the sun stays above the horizon all day long during the summer solstice of June 21st and 22nd. Meanwhile, the polar day in Rovaniemi lasts for a month from June 6th to July 7th. The reason is a slight inclination of the Earth's axis and sunlight refraction. Those who see the midnight sun for the first time or experience a number of consecutive days with non-setting sun will never forget the overwhelming impression of an endless and unfading day. No sunrise, no sunset, no variable play of light during morning or evening dawns. Just amazing light effects caused by sun all day and all night long in the sky. Many perceive the Arctic Circle as a border, to the north of which there is neither fuss nor stress. It is impossible to pop into Rovaniemi for a few days during the midnight sun season and fail to see it. White nights last almost all summer. This means that many recreational activities and fun are available 24-7. Absolutely everything that can be done during the day is possible for doing at night. Sleep? Yep, but later. Today's tourist lodges are built with the principles of the National Lapish Construction in mind. Hotel room interiors are a fusion of the exclusive Scandinavian design and Lapish traditions, and the wooden decor provides warmth and comfort even in the biting cold weather. A meticulous home plan helps guests to admire the aurora borealis through glass windows and roofs without leaving posh rooms. For example, an igloo village, this is the name given by the Finns to hemispherical gazebos like those built by the Eskimos. One of the gazebo walls shaped similar to igloos with the authentic lapish ornaments is ceiling to floor transparent. Or detached houses. Rooms. Lapland is packed with such eco-hotels. Through the windows of rooms with glass ceilings, one can enjoy the amazing beauty of Lapland nature year-round. Guests will explore the northern lights on polar nights, the midnight sun in summer, and the bright colors of early autumn. Transparent walls face north, where thousands of stars illuminate the sky and the magical northern lights shine in winter. Cafes and restaurants in Lapland often offer traditional Sami recipes based on northern reindeer venison. The main delicacy for the northerners is cooked in a variety of ways, stewed, fried, and dried. For a truly once-in-a-lifetime experience, taste some local food in a real snowy restaurant made of ice blocks. Here. Not only tables, but even walls and bar counters are made of ice. Try authentic Lapish vodka and Mintu liqueur there. Since the temperature in the ice restaurant is below zero, tasting strong drinks will be hardly unhealthy. If you wish, get a good handle on your condition by rolling from an ice slide and checking your senses. Every hotel in Lapland has a special guest house styled as a Sami Kota. This center of such a home has an open firewood hearth where you can get warm or cook something tasty. For example, a traditional salmon filet, as they say, smoked. Laplanders have cooked fish, which local lakes are packed with in this way since ancient times.
while fish is being fried, they will offer you a national snack. Salmon caviar, salted and smoked fish, some meat, and sliced pickles. We bet freshly caught fish cooked on an open fire yourself is always awesome. Enjoying a warm lodge with nice company beside a burning hearth with a boiling teapot is the ultimate getaway, helping to unwind and escape from the daily hustle and bustle. Besides savoring fresh food, you can drink not only tea, but also plain water, advised to be drunk safely right from the tap in Finland. The Finns are proud of their perfect cleaning system. Add clear wood air and enjoy your ultimate eco-escape in this amazing country. A unique place in Lapland is Inari Lake, which is sacred to the Sami. It appeared during the Ice Age. Inari has an amazing relief shaped by numerous islands, shallows, bays, and open straits down to 92 meters deep. The lake is a catchment basin where more than 20 rivers of Lapland flow into. The pristine nature of the lake seems timeless. For hundreds of years, almost nothing has changed on the banks of Inari. That is why it has won over lovers of untouched nature. Many visit Lapland precisely because of Inari. Like the Sami, some travelers believe in the positive vibes of this place, making it their haunt to recharge their batteries. It is not by mere chance that locals consider the lake to be the sacred and the first creation of God in the Sami lore. It's not just that. In the open waters of Enri, you can enjoy many pleasant days at one with untouched nature and ultimate solitude. Just a few villages and houses for a stop, nothing more on its shores. Those keen to stay longer on the shores of this sacred lake should pop into a small village surrounded by hills in Sariselka. It is located amidst Europe's largest pristine wildlife area and is a truly perfect destination for those seeking escape from the world's hustle and bustle. For an ultimate sink with local nature, choose a cottage made of stained wood, a unique building material. Nature and our ancestors chose to make sure we have it now. If a tree was in water due to wind, landslide, or got lost during transportation, chances were it would turn into strong and highly valued stained wood over the years. It is all about tannins, which, when in contact with the iron salts contained in water, make wood strong and durable. As a result, Trees with these qualities become a valuable building material. Timber gets stronger, harder, and more resistant. It no longer requires any chemical treatment, even painting. In fact, this is a brand new material beating out its expensive and distinguished peers. Homes made of such material are in harmony with the landscapes of energy and are perceived as a natural object. No wonder Santa Claus chose Sariselka for his second residence. Its nature has been preserved over the past centuries. The silence and tranquility of woods around the village lure not only the traditional Christmas figure, but also many people from around the world. Most have chosen this escape for many years because the simple and harsh nature of this place is so captivating. The sauna is a sacred place for the Finnish soul. It has always been this way, both in the times of the Kalevala and now. 
Saunas have mushroomed across the nation, being a big part of culture and traditions. So unwind in the sauna and savor its invigorating warmth in Lapland. An invitation to visit a sauna is a sign of respect. So you must have a good reason to refuse. A classic Finnish sauna is dimly lit without any music or foreign smells, except for those of birch branches and natural tar. Each owner has its own secrets and rituals, but the result is always the same. Ultimate body and soul relaxation. A wood-burning sauna is the most traditional in the Finnish culture. Its steam is mild, yet quite strong. This type is the most common in cottages, and here, a true ritual begins. After all, first you need to chop wood, light a fire, preheat your sauna, and only then enjoy it. In summer, you can frequently see floating saunas on lakes and rivers. It is very unusual to see a bathhouse raft on water. Aboard, one can combine body purification with the spiritual pleasure of observing the beauty of the wild shores you are passing by. Each owner of such a sauna tries to make it unique and as comfortable as possible for people to relax. The wood-burning stove is preheated as much as possible because the river in the middle is chillier than on the shore. On the deck, you can relax and try sausages kindly grilled by the skipper. The coastal views are especially stunning in the evening. With the midnight sun up in the sky, the colors are indescribable, and a trip itself will be unforgettable. Nature in Lapland is not only wild, but also available to everyone. The Finnish law states that every person living or arriving in the country may travel around the countryside, pick berries and mushrooms, fish with a fishing rod, and use natural recreation zones even while in a private territory. The Finns call this opportunity everyone's right to nature. Country residents are strongly committed to preserving their water resources. Finland has many lakes, of which more than three quarters are considered clean. However, just a few years ago, only a third had such a status. In a short time, the Finns cleaned their ponds, which are closely monitored now. All water resources are divided into hundreds of areas where algae activity, presence of garbage is monitored, and water samples are taken. Sustainability is ensured through selective fishing and cleaning lakes from excessive vegetation. In such conditions, fish reproduce very actively. To curb overwhelming fish stock levels, the country promotes active fishing echoed by the locals who mastered this craft many hundreds of years ago. It is hard to imagine a Laplander without fish in addition, fishing lovers from different countries visit these riverlands. In Finland, rod fishing and ice fishing do not require any special permits. For other fishing types, an individual state license is needed. It is worth remembering that Finns take care of their nature, so they have developed restrictions on the size of caught fish. This means that small fish, 
must be released. The sustainability of lake and river systems is preserved and anglers enjoy all the pleasure of the fishing process. A very wise approach to lake cleanliness and nature conservation. Among tourists, Rovaniemi is known primarily as the homeland of Santa Claus, aka Yolopuki, in Finnish. It is the official residence of the key New Year and Christmas figure. The first honorary visitor of these magical places was the wife of the American president, Eleanor Roosevelt. Her visit in 1950 kicked off the opening of the fairy tale village, which, since then has been a big tourist destination, especially in winter. Santa is here! This inscription is seen by every visitor. And surprisingly, Santa really lived here. And the community is called Santa Claus Village. Here is his house, with his inscription flashing on the roof. According to one of the theories, Santa lives in the Arctic Circle. Therefore, the pillars in front of his porch have an appropriate inscription symbolizing this geographic landmark. You can cross this line back and forth, or stand with one foot off the Arctic Circle, the other inside. Next to it, there is his mail office, perhaps even the most visited place in the village. It is here that letters from children of the whole world are received, and it is from here that congratulations from Santa are sent to the whole world. Each postcard and letter bear an official postmark of the Arctic Circle. About 700,000 letters with wishes and requests from around the world are delivered here annually. Here in his Christmas home, Santa welcomes guests and works year-round with his helpers, elves, and gnomes. He meets adults and children in his office. In addition to meeting Santa himself, children in his village can pack a lot more magic in. For example, visiting the school elves with the secret toy workshop, in which these little fairy tale little ones will teach your children how to make Christmas toys. Four Seasons Sleigh Ride and a visit to the Gingerbread Kitchen will be no less exciting, where everyone can try the crucial task of decorating gingerbread. In summer, such an adventure is unusual and engaging. Outside, the sun is warm and you have already plunged into the atmosphere of Christmas. However, if you arrive in winter, get ready for a bewitching fairy tale. Adults are often more delighted than children. After all, Christmas is a holiday for life, and celebrating it in Lapland is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Many people visit Lapland in winter, and precisely on Christmas Eve. This is the highest tourist season, despite the frost and polar nights. At this time, ample snow offers many opportunities for outdoor activities. Age does not matter. Lapland is stunning in winter. 
fluffy soft snow envelops trees and houses. The sun stays low above the horizon and paints the winter landscape in yellow, red, and crimson colors. The play of colors and snow are breathtaking, and you can never get enough of the world around. After sunset, chase the northern lights. A truly amazing view and a once-in-a-lifetime experience for many people from all over the world. Winter rings bells of a ski vacation. Very popular snowshoeing, flat skis, and reindeer or dog sleigh safari. Lapland ski resorts offer skiers and snowboarders runs of all challenge levels. For children, there is plenty of entertainment and fun in the snow parks. The season begins in late October. It takes quite some time for the sun to melt a thick layer of snow, so one can ski here until late May. Ski resorts in Finland promote pleasant and relaxing holidays, unlike crowded noisy resorts of Central Europe. Forget about long lines at cable railways and being afraid of desperate skiers smashing into you on the run. Levi is Finland's most popular ski resort. Its key attractions are two snow parks, a variety of skiing and snowboarding slopes and runs, as well as the vibrant center of the tourist village. It lures vacationers with its leisurely and unhurried atmosphere. Meeting a Finn who never tried skiing is almost impossible. After all, this is one of the favorite winter sports. Among 5.4 million Finns, nearly 1 million consider themselves active skiers. Most Finns learn skiing in primary school. Traditionally, during winter holidays, families with children visit ski resorts. Winter in Lapland is also the time of polar nights. The magical flashes of lights adding to the beauty of the winter landscapes already bathed in the moonlight. The ancient Sami linked the emergence of the northern lights with foxes moving among the snow-covered hills. According to the local legends, these bright heavenly lights are nothing but sparks carved from these peaks with simple fox tail wagging. Spotting the magical Aurora Borealis with their own eyes is an exciting and fascinating once-in-a-lifetime experience for most people. However, there are enthusiasts who get so fascinated by this natural phenomenon that the hunt for it becomes a real and lifelong passion. Ribbon-like shapes of the northern lights observed only in the Arctic Circle when luminous bands freely moving in the air twist into spiral rings and wavy serpentine ribbons spark a particular interest. These ribbons often shape the most majestic and beautiful forms of the aurora, greenish curtains vibrating in the air like folded giant draperies. Their lower edges are sharply cut, while the upper parts are blurry and smudgy. The aurora borealis is a sight ultimately worth seeing with your own eyes. Reindeer are a symbol of Lapland, and their population exceeds the number of people here. In winter, reindeer roam along the hills enjoying life in the northern wilderness. Of course, no Sami tribe could survive without reindeer. The whole Sami life was linked to these animals. Reindeer were the key to family survival as a source of meat and skins for footwear and clothes, and reindeer tendons were used as sewing threads. Bones and horns were taken to make tools and utensils. In addition, Reindeer served as a means of transport for the Sami. In summer, reindeer grazed freely. By winter, the herd was collected. In winter, reindeer were additionally fed. This system has been preserved until now. 
Even if it seems that you see a large number of wild reindeer around, digging up snow in search of reindeer lichen, white moss, this is just a delusion. All reindeer you see in Lapland are likely to be domesticated with the owner's mark on their ears. You can meet reindeer several times a day. Twice a year, all reindeer are collected in sheds to mark young and count the current stock. Wood sections are often delineated with nets put in place. There are nets along the roads. Reindeer live in a limited space, but they are quite happy with it. Although there are places with no net for many kilometers, sometimes reindeer jump out into the road quite unexpectedly. In fact, these are semi-domesticated animals, even though they have owners. Earmarks are visible and some have collars. The pure and serene nature of Lapland is a wonderful environment to unwind in. At any age and at any time of the year you can find something to enjoy. The nature of this land is vibrant with ample birds and mammals. The beauty of nature differs by region. The southern and western areas are close to the sea, with the rivers and rich flora. The central and eastern Lapland are famous for hills and dense woods. The northern Lapland is more barren, with only low deciduous trees and shrubs, and you can easily walk along bare hills. Most of woods are coniferous, with ever-growing lichens. Nature, woods, Water flows and landscape thoroughly impact local residents distinguished by nerve, calmness, and unhurried manner. Summer opportunities are in no way worse than winter activities. Lapland is an ever-changing region Snow melting spurs intensive growth and flowering, bringing new pleasures and activities. Plunge into the beauty of nature and enjoy what it has to offer you this season. River rafting and rowing, fishing, golf, hiking and horseback riding, mountain biking, and just picking mushrooms and berries in the woods. Life here is full of contrast with everything plunging into darkness on polar winter nights. While in summer, the sun shines round the clock. Just a few kilometers away from cities and diverse resorts, you will savor freedom and infinite wilderness. The vast expanses of Lapland make a person feel like a small particle of this world. Wandering alone along hills of the Lapland tundra is a perfect way to get to know yourself and find your life purpose. Nature works wonders taking off the burden of worries and problems. It is the possibility of lonely wandering in pristine, wild nature alone with one's thoughts that is a key element of Lapland's magical appeal. Indeed, being in sync with nature is still one of the most inspired human impressions. Like all spiritual experience in life, Lapland needs to be explored, seen, and felt. Not far from the town of Renua, there is the eponymous Wildlife Park. Opened in 1983, it has become one of Lapland's landmarks, a place visited by tourists with great interest. Surrounded by swamps, lakes, and woods, this zoo is the northernmost park in the world dedicated exclusively to Arctic fauna. Among other things, it houses a hospital and a shelter for wounded animals. The park is located right in the spruce wood, has almost no cages, where all animals enjoy freedom, 
while guests move along high bridges and three-kilometer trails and observe animals from above without disturbing them. It is very quiet, and only muffled owl hoots are heard from the dense reserve. A collection of different owl species is a signature of the zoo. The territory of the Arctic Park is not large, but more than 200 Arctic species live and move here freely. This is a true wildlife oasis. The Arctic Zoo is open all year round. There are no exotic animals and tropical birds, but you can observe polar species almost in their natural habitat. The collection of the zoo includes three polar bears. In 2012, Renua Zoo became one of the few wildlife parks able to breed polar bears in captivity. All animals are friendly enough, not afraid of people. Therefore, they often come quite close and you have a unique opportunity to look closer at the amazing inhabitants of the North. Ranua Zoo is strongly committed to preserving rare species of Arctic animals and birds, and the Arctic nature as a whole. The ancient Lapish legends have survived until today as they were shared by word of mouth among generations. The source of inspiration for the Sami legends was nature itself, that all-encompassing being that appeared long before humankind and which will be in this world long afterwards. Life in Lapland follows the natural cycle of Mother Nature, the rhythm of which is determined by vivid contrasts between the four seasons. In summer, Lapland's tundra soaks in the midnight sun for two months in a row. Nature gives generous warmth and light to the Arctic flora, and the sun heartily compensates for the lack of its attention to the harsh northern landscapes in winter. During polar winters, the horizon is painted in all kinds of red shades, creating gloomy yet pacifying vibes 
inspiring hope for the forthcoming spring and the long-awaited sunrise. This place exudes infinite calmness and a feeling of being at one with nature. People living in this part of our planet identify themselves as children of nature. Like their reindeer, like fish splashing in the lake and owls gliding silently among the centuries old trees. And they are happy with this, just like any person coming here to the north with a pure soul. <laughs>